Brothers, let's dive into an intriguing topic that affects many, particularly those on the far left side of the political spectrum, cognitive dissonance. This is the mental discomfort we feel when holding contradictory beliefs or values. You know, like when you're trying to eat clean but that double-stuffed crust pizza keeps calling your name. It's that internal struggle, that battle between what you think you should believe and what you actually do. And trust me, in the wild world of politics, cognitive dissonance runs rampant. Today we're going to break down 10 of these head-scratching contradictions that are as common as a Bernie Sanders meme in a college dorm room. So, buckle up, grab your thinking caps, and let's get ready to rumble in the cognitive cage match. First up, we've got the classic battle of free speech versus hate speech. Now, the far left, they love them some free speech, right? They're all about letting everyone have their say, no matter how crazy. But then, things get a little dicey when someone comes along spouting views they don't like. Suddenly it's all hate speech this and ban those platforms that. It's like they want a free speech buffet where they get to pick and choose what's on the menu. But here's the thing man, you can't have it both ways. You can't be out there championing free speech for all, and then turn around and try to silence the voices you disagree with. It's like inviting someone to a debate and then stuffing their mouth with a sock when they start making good points. It just ain't right man. Next up, we're talking environmentalism versus technology dependence. Now, everyone knows the far left is all about saving Mother Earth. They're out there fighting climate change, pushing for renewable energy, and generally trying to make the world a greener place. But here's the kicker. They also can't seem to live without their gadgets. I'm talking iPhones, laptops, electric cars, all that tech stuff that requires a whole lot of not-so-environmentally friendly manufacturing processes. It's like they're trying to save the planet while simultaneously draining its resources to power their Instagram feeds. It's a classic case of do as I say, not as I do. Look, I get it, technology is awesome, but let's be real. It comes at a cost. And maybe, just maybe, we need to start thinking about the environmental impact of our tech addiction. All right, let's talk diversity versus segregation. The far left, they're all about that diversity and inclusion, right? They want everyone to be treated equally regardless of race, gender, or sexual orientation. But then, they turn around and create spaces and events that are exclusive to specific groups. It's like they're saying, we believe in diversity, but only on our terms. It's like having a party and then separating everyone into different rooms based on their ethnicity. It just doesn't add up, man. If you're truly about diversity, then you should embrace it in all its forms, not just the ones that fit your narrative. Now let's get into the whole economic equality versus wealthy advocates thing. The far left, they're all about sticking it to the man, right? They rail against the 1%, demand wealth redistribution, and generally champion the little guy. But here's the irony. They often receive funding and support from those very same wealthy elites, it's like they're biting the hand that feeds them, or maybe it's more like getting a trust fund while protesting capitalism. Look, I'm all for fighting for economic equality, but let's be honest about where the money's coming from. It's kind of hard to dismantle the system when you're relying on its beneficiaries to fund your movement. All right, let's address the elephant in the room, social justice versus due process. Now, I'm all for social justice. Fighting for equality, fairness, and holding people accountable for their actions is crucial. But somewhere along the way, the far left decided to take justice into their own hands with this whole cancel culture thing. They'll try to ruin someone's life over a tweet from 10 years ago, without a trial, without a chance for redemption. It's like they've become judge, jury, and executioner all rolled into one. Look, I get it, people make mistakes, but shouldn't there be room for forgiveness and growth? This whole cancel culture thing, it's like a digital witch hunt, and it's getting out of hand. Next up, we've got the classic conundrum of anti-capitalism versus consumer behavior. Now the far left, they love to hate on corporations, right? They're always railing against corporate greed, sweatshops, and the evils of capitalism. But then, you see them rocking the latest iPhone, sipping their Starbucks lattes and buying clothes from those very same corporations they claim to despise. It's like they're trying to dismantle the system from the inside, one overpriced latte at a time. It's a classic case of cognitive dissonance, man. You can't be a revolutionary while simultaneously fueling the machine you're trying to overthrow. Let's unravel the tangled web of globalism versus localism. 
The far left, they often champion global initiatives like open borders and international cooperation. They believe in a borderless world, where everyone's welcome and we're all interconnected. But then, they also advocate for local community autonomy, protecting local industries, and preserving local cultures. It's like they want to have their global cake and eat it locally too. It's a tricky balance, man. You can't be completely globalist and completely localist at the same time. It's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. All right, buckle up for this one cultural relativism versus universal rights. Now the far left is all about embracing cultural differences and respecting diverse cultural practices. They believe that no culture is inherently superior to another and that we should celebrate our differences. But here's the rub. They also advocate for universal human rights, which, let's be honest, can sometimes clash with certain cultural norms. It's like they're saying, all cultures are equal, but some cultures are more equal than others. It's a tough one, man. How do you reconcile the idea of respecting all cultures with the need to uphold basic human rights for everyone? Next up, we're diving into the identity politics versus unity dilemma. Now, the far left often emphasizes identity politics, focusing on the experiences and struggles of specific identity groups. They believe that recognizing and addressing these individual differences is crucial for achieving true equality. But here's the paradox. They also call for unity and solidarity among all people, regardless of their differences. It's like they're trying to build a united front while simultaneously highlighting the things that divide us. It's a tough needle to thread, man. How do you promote unity while also emphasizing our differences? And finally, let's tackle the government intervention versus individual freedoms debate. The far left, they're often big proponents of government intervention in areas like healthcare, education, and social welfare. They believe that the government has a responsibility to provide for its citizens and create a more equitable society. But here's the catch. They also champion individual freedoms and autonomy and personal choices. It's like they want the government to hold our hands in some areas of life while giving us complete freedom in others. It's a delicate balancing act, man. Where do you draw the line between government intervention and individual liberty? Even more perplexing is the support from some homosexuals for Palestine, where homosexuality is not widely accepted. This paradox highlights how deeply embedded and complex cognitive dissonance can be. Understanding and addressing these contradictions is essential for developing more consistent and coherent political ideologies. Stay strong and self-aware, brothers. And don't forget to subscribe to Entering Manhood's YouTube channel for more insights and discussions.